Zell Boy Army, welcome to another spicy one on the channel. In this video today, we are going to be looking at the best defenders on FIFA 22. I'm going to do top five for each position. So top five left backs, top five centre backs, top five right backs. No icons, no heroes. This is purely going to be uh, non-icons or heroes. So we can have player of the months, we can have informs, we can have rule breaks, all those. But we're not using any others because when you get to those... They tend to just be crazy prices. If you like these type of videos where I'm picking out the best players in the game for you, helping you look at the best options, gameplay tips, tutorials, tactics, please consider subscribing, liking the video. Every single day, spicy content here to help you guys get better at the game. Now, we're looking at left backs first. The key stats you want on this game for a fullback, this is obviously a big part, like some FIFA's, you wanted on FIFA 19, you wanted fullbacks who were six foot two with good jumping. Not that big a deal this year. Still happens occasionally, but it's not that big a deal. The main things you're going to want are pace, solid enough defending, good physical, and decent on the ball, and nice passing to plus. Robertson obviously has all those coming in at number five. Skill moves, weak foot, not very good on him. It's not essential, but it definitely is a benefit. This card, I'm purely basing off his 88. He's almost certain, I think, I think if Liverpool win one of the last two, he gets a 90 card. He'll get plus two because Liverpool won three of the four Champions League games and made the knockouts. This Robertson's already guaranteed an 89. When he goes to a 90, especially if they give him like three or four pace, this card probably shoots up the top five. Obviously, there might be more cards out by them. The meta of this game right now, for me, around the fullbacks, is dealing with through balls down the line. Good physicals are very nice to be able to bully wingers and attackers. And then being able to play good through balls because the fullbacks are playing a lot. I think the chip through balls are maybe a bit easier to do regardless of the passing. But better passing does definitely help. This Robertson coming at number five is a very good option. None of these options, by the way, I'm basing off chemistry. I'm not going to give a player an advantage if he's easier to link into the team. I'm purely basing them off what I think of the card. Number four. Ferland Mendy. Maybe could have been higher. Very, very good card. He's a card you could use day one of FIFA and the last day of FIFA. Very good pace. He just doesn't have great passing, great on the ball, great defending. He's just average at those, which lower him a bit. His physical is very good, to be fair, for a left back. He could generally be higher. Um, I just don't think the four star, five star is that essential in this game, but he's a very good card. There are a couple of fullbacks who will miss out, by the way. In this one is Renan Lodi. He is a very good option, but I just don't think he quite made the list here. Theo Hernandez. On other FIFAs, I probably would have gone Mendy because Mendy um, has the better weak foot and skills. This Theo is just naturally a bit quicker, which means you can go an anchor and still get 99 pace, whereas Mendy, you're not getting that 99 pace with an anchor. He just feels physically very dominant in game. I don't know. Hernandez just has a body type that's very good. He feels very good on the ball as well. Um, I really like this Theo Hernandez. I used Mendy and him quite a lot and did prefer this one. Alfonso Davies is my new left back. Um, I just think he's better all around. The extra agility and dribbling with pretty solid stats across the board um, really helps. The shooting, it's not relevant at fullback, so I'm not putting him higher up this list because of his shooting, but it obviously is a nice addition. This Davies could play in centre mid in the attack somewhere. Personally, I don't really care about work rates. I really don't think they make that big a difference on FIFA. Some people might disagree and not even use a card based on the work rates. But for me, it honestly is not that big a deal personally. But yeah, I really like this Alfonso Davies. But my number one left back, I've not used him. But I've played against him a lot. And I feel like if you know the game well enough, you can look at stats, body types, how players play when they play against you. You can judge them anyway. Maxwell Cornet. Shame we don't have his five-star week for anymore. And it's weird saying that this guy's the best left-back on the game right now. But if you look, he's got more defending than any of these guys except Robertson. He's got the best physical out of any of them. He's good on the ball. And his 82 dribbling, honestly, will feel better than that considering it's 91. He's rapid. His passing's fine. This cornet's crazy. And he's got solid enough weak foot. Uh, four-star weak foot's very good at fullback. This cornet's crazy. Not the easiest to link in. You, you're not getting any good strong links to him. You need a Premier League player or an icon to link him in. But he is amazing. And right now, statistics-wise, and attributes, probably the best left-back in the game, in my opinion. Obviously, there's always going to be opinion and debate amongst these. But for me, I'm putting him there. Right-backs. We're putting a talent here. 
His passing and defending and physical whilst being solid, let him down a bit. But that four-star, four five-star is a bit like Furl and Mendy. Um, really good card, just lacks in a few other areas, but very good card and very cheap right back you can use at this point in the game. He's coming in at number five. Trent, obviously as well, the full right backs, you want the same stuff as left backs. Trent, very solid defending, pretty good on the ball. Loses a bit of his passing from his uh, mother card. That's where his rule break has lost out. But very good passing still compared to a lot of right backs. A lot quicker on this card. Good weak foot. If his physical was like six, seven higher, he could have been the number one. But that physical, whilst not being bad, is not elite. It lowers him down the list, but still a very good card. Jesus Navas. Obviously, you're going to say, Zell, his physical is not very good either. He makes up for that with elite dribbling, defending, and passing. This guy's the best fullback on the game outside of the icons right now when it comes to the ability on the ball with his passing and dribbling, I would say. And then his defending is really good as well. I think out of all the defend fullbacks on this list, he's got the highest defending stat. The weak foot and physical, though, lower him. So he's number three, but I do really like him. Tavernier. This is mostly because he's good on the ball, but he's got elite physical. This Tavernier card, not the easiest to link in. Good nationality, but the Scottish League, I don't even know if there's anyone else good in that league right now in the game. But this Tavernier, very good card. Got the featured team of the week. Um, if you can fit him into your team, he's going to be great value and an absolute animal. Really good card at this point of the game. Hakimi, though, is my number one. Hakimi, I don't know. Even though other players can get to 99 pace, this Hakimi just seems to have ridiculous recovery speed no matter what. He seems very good physically. He just has a good body type. He's great on the ball. Attributes why he doesn't he isn't as good as some of the others on this list, I would say. But he just plays above his stats, I would say. I've used him a lot, I've played against him a lot. I hate playing him. That's an obvious side, he's very good. Now to centre backs. For centre backs, you want high pace, more so on the sprint speed side. Decent agility to deal with through balls. That's why you will find Virgil van Dijk and Varane are not on this list. Partly because their body type and just agility bounce ain't enough to turn quick. When it comes to chip through balls, you need decent agility and pace to deal with them. And then obviously elite defender and physical is good. Ability on the ball is a nice plus. This Klosterman, whilst a bit slower, has a lot better defender and physical. He's good on the ball and he's still very quick and going to be an elite centre back on this game. Cooler Ballet. The agility and bounce really do hurt this cooler ballet, but unlike Van Dyke, he's quick enough with that sprint speed. He's going to get 99 sprint speed, which Van Dyke I think can get to, but he doesn't have nearly enough to excel. This cooler ballet, whilst he's going to struggle a bit turning, he's so quick with such ridiculous defending physical stats. I'm letting him off. Obviously, I wouldn't have recommended doing a cooler ballet player of the month, but if you did do him, he is an animal. Tamari, very good agility. His lower physical and defending stats are what are not putting him in the top two for me. But coming at number three, rapid, like he's getting 99 uh, sprint speed. Very good agility, one of the best I've seen on centre-back this year. Solid enough defending and physical to recommend him. Good week for this tomorrow is a bit of an animal. Rudiger, beast, not the best agility and balance, but again, really quick and he has elite defending. His physical also is a lot better than anyone in my opinion. I don't think stamina is that relevant at centre-back. And his strength and aggression is still class. And he's really quick. And he's not too bad on the ball. He's got that big body type. Um, he seems to turn quite quick in game. Again, I hate playing against him. This Rudiger is a very good card. And then Mark Enos, my boy. Number one centre-back in the game right now for me. That is That even could include icons. I've not used mid Maldini because he's so expensive. I slightly prefer this guy to baby Maldini. And when I've played against other icons, they don't really seem better than him. His defending is as good as it gets. He's fine physically. He's great in the air with that jump, and he wins a lot of headers. He's quick, brilliant passing, good on the ball, turns quick. Six foot's fine on this game. Just a brilliant centre-back. His reactions and composure are very nice as well, which is a nice little plus. Marquinhos has great links. Not that I'd counted that, but it's just another plus. And he's probably at least going to get a 90. They conceded a last-minute equaliser against Leipzig. If they hadn't conceded that, this card would have been guaranteed to get to a 91, which would have just been outrageous, but I still love this card. And that concludes the list. 
I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see me do this for midfielders and attackers, please let me know. Try to help you guys get better at this game. Try to give you lots of options to have fun with. Appreciate you guys' support as always. Keep it spicy, and I'll see you in the next one.